So thanks a lot for the great introduction. Um, so my name is Herr Guggenheimer. I'm going to present the workshop VR that we did last year. And I'm going to start my presentation by showing you straight away the system that we built. Um, so the main motivation behind this work was we wanted to create a system that will not um, isolate the user that wears a VR HMD, but include everyone in the environment and the surrounding and let them be part of the virtual um, environment and let them interact with the user as well. Um, I've got to jump right into the motivation. And the motivation is uh, when we think about that last year, these three main HMDs um, from the three main companies were released, and they're currently all tailored or trying to um, be the entertainment system or are currently used as entertainment systems. And if we think a little bit further, um, so they want to be part of this living room that we have, so they want to be there. And um, uh, Vanakesh et al. showed already that um, the living room that we have is a highly social environment where people interact and experience content through technology. And as well, that an entertainment system that comes in there has to cover different levels of engagement, which vary between all the members of the household that we have. So just imagine, I would have, there would be my family, and I would have a HSC wife. I probably will have my grandparents watching me. They probably don't want to interact or play with me, but they want to understand what is going on if I'm going to use the system. On the other hand, for instance, if a, my little brother would probably not be able to use the system. Currently, a technical limitation we have, um, the HMD should not be used uh, with an age below 13. So I would fully exclude him for the experience, the second way I would have this. And additional people, spouse, uh, no, spouses, um, friends, siblings that would come, which would not have an additional HMD, would not be part of this VR experience. So we try to cover all of these and try to include them in this experience. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, so what we, and this is an interesting idea that we saw, which Valve presented. And when we saw this, we got a little bit scared initially. We were like, oh my god, I hope they didn't do this. And um, the good part is, it shows the vision really well. It includes everyone on the couch into the virtual world. They can talk with each other and interact with each other. But what Valve did it was just a recording. It was a green screen trick that they did. So the ones that watched this recording can see this, but the people actually sitting there did not have this experience as we wanted to generate it. So our main question was, how can we include people in this environment without an HMD and make them understand and also interact with the HMD user in the, uh, in, with the virtual world? So I'm going to talk you through the system that we have. So on the base on the system, um, we're using the HTC Vive and the Lighthouse trackers. And this tracking space that the Vive has, we visualize for everyone in the environment using two projectors opposite of each other. And additionally, there was a technical limitation back then. Um, we used one of the controllers and gave it to the non-HMD user and attached a display on top of it. And because we know where this controller is in the space, we can render an image that works as a window into the virtual world. So the non-HMD user can also explore through this window the virtual world. And what we also have, uh, we have the mirrored view of the user. And throughout my talk, I'm going to show you several of these videos. So every time you're going to look at this video, you will see the mirrored view of what the actual VR user is experiencing. And we have the non-HMD user also here with our system. And this all creates this shared physical space that we have. And it is it's quite an interesting thought that we created this, that these people share this physical space here, but they both experience it in a different modality, so they both have a different view on it, but they're still capable and able to interact with each other and play with each other. So I'm going to continue the video, and you're going to see my colleague Julian is drawing. So this was a simple uh, tilt brush application that we reprogrammed, and I'm also from the outside, can understand and see what's going on, and we can draw together something. Uh. So when we had the system, we were thinking, okay, how can we now um, develop certain experiences and applications that are tailored towards this asymmetric interaction and include everyone in the environment? Um, so we went on and implemented three experiences, and I'm going to talk now about the first two. Later on, I'm briefly going to mention the last third. Um, so the first application we have, uh, we call it Be My Light, um, is a dungeon explorer. So that was a collaborative application. We wanted to see how can we design something that people in the environment can collaborate all together in this game. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And so the roles that we have here, the HMD user is a knight, and we position this knight in a dungeon. What we did is we removed all the light out of this dungeon. So the only source of light is this fairy. So I'm the fairy in this scenario. Um, 
floating around and have to shine light for the user. And this already creates a certain dependency that we have. So the participants, they had to interact with each other. They had to coordinate their movements and their um, interactions. Um, the projection we used here is a map overview. Initially, we have a one-to-one -one mapping. This is possible with the system that we have, but we changed it here. So now the non-HMD user can break out and explore the whole field or the whole dungeon that we have. And here again, we used asymmetric information. So the fairy knows more than the knight, and the knight knows certain things that the fairy doesn't know. So they have to interact, they have to talk to each other, they have to collaborate to solve all these puzzles. Um, yeah, and the uh, fairy as well has a spotlight that she has and has to shine light. And this ended in a certain interaction where the knight was like, oh, please shine light here, shine light here, something's coming. And the main interaction of the knight was it has a sword and he was capable to teleport throughout the whole um, dungeon as well. A uh, simple teleport that was done were similar as the Valve in the Valve demo. And um, so I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna see some of the directions. So you can see that I'm changing the perspective of the map several times, and I'm positioning myself around um, my colleague Julian, who's playing the HMD user here. <coughs> and this was also an interesting finding that we saw, that the non-HMD user later on was the one that was responsible. He had to walk around the HMD user and take care that no cables and other things were in the way. Um, then, in the second application, we implemented a competitive application. We wanted to see how can we build a, a, well, a competitive game here between the HMD and non-HMD user and how would this work out. So, the, this game is kind of based on a simple uh, child game known throughout the world. Either I wrote the names Statues, Red Light, Green Light, or Grandma's Footsteps. This is the principal um, child game that's based on. And it's also motivated by Ruckus Ridge, which is a current one of the uh, little um, asymmetric VR applications. So, um, oh yeah, perfect. So this game itself is, is not that tricky, but it's a little bit difficult to explain, so bear with me. Um, so what we did, we placed the HMD user in front of a field of boxes. And the non-HMD user is one of the boxes, indistinguishable from all the others. Um, the goal of the HMD user is to find which of these boxes is the non-HMD user and to shoot him what does the marker he has. The only way to find out is because the non-HMD user is running around. This is the only moving box in the scene. To make this a little bit more tricky, we limited the field of view. So the HMD user has to scan with the spotlight that he has, and the light goes out after a few seconds. So he has to turn around and recharge the light. And during this turning around, the non-HMD user has to sneak around and look into each of the boxes and find a certain gem that he has. And that's a winning condition for the non-HMD and the HMD user. And the interesting part that we added here, you can see this, this is a little sword. So there was one last resort. The second with Julian would find me, I will have one last chance to hit out his light by smacking him with the sword. So there was a, a certain cooldown that was not always possible, but we were curious, how would this physical interaction in this space actually turn out? How would people perceive this? So I'm gonna start, continue the video. I'm gonna see I'm standing still, so Julian can find me. Now he looks away, I'm trying to move a little bit. Trying to look through some of the boxes. <coughs> and at one point, I'm probably going to just panic and run around, try to find everything that I can. And there you go. So this was one of my conditions. So um, then we ran a user study. We were curious, and we wanted to know what impact the share VR has on enjoyment, presence, and social interaction between the HMD and non-HMD user. And uh, what we did, we had three variables, and I'm gonna just go briefly over this study. If you wanna have more results of the study, please look into the paper. So the first variable that we had, and it was the main variable, was we used our system share VR, and all these applications we implemented as well, that they are possible to play as a non-HMD user, sitting on a couch with a controller. So it were exactly the same applications, but the baseline condition was the non-HMD user sat on a couch, had the controller. Something that was envisioned by PlayStation VR, for instance. The other variables were both applications, um, collaborative from competitive, and the roles, HMD and non-HMD users. And we recruited 16 participants, so we had eight pairs, and everything was counterbalanced, and everyone experienced all the applications and all the um, possibilities. So what we did, we measured um, 
a positive experience using the GEQ questionnaire. And here we did not find any significant results. But what we also did, we had a um, single item questionnaire on the Likert scale where we asked how much did you enjoy using the system. And we look at this, we found significant um, increase using Share VR compared to the baseline. And one of the interesting things I want to point out here is that our goal initially was we wanted to increase the enjoyment or the fund for the non HMD user. But by including the um, non HMD user, we also increased the enjoyment of the HMD user himself. So bringing people into the virtual world and the environment is not only beneficial for the non HMD user, it's also beneficial for the HMD user. Um, social interaction measured with the behavioral involvement subscale of the GEQ, and again, we did not find any significant results here. Again, we expect this because we had a relatively low sample size. But in a single item question, again, we found a significant increase of social interaction using share VR compared to the baseline. And in the last part, we used the Slater user steed to measure the presence of the user. And again, we found significant increase um, using share VR compared to the baseline. And again, this effect that we saw, the presence was not only increased for the non HMD user, but also for the HMD user. Um, we further went on and ran a second user study. And in the second user study, it was an explorative user study. Our goal was we wanted to gain a deeper understanding of the whole design space and the implications that arise from this concept that we created. And we wanted to have some design guidelines or some lessons learned that we had. And for this, we used the sandbox application, the third application that we had, and it consisted of four mini games. And what we did is we um, invited two groups of each three people into our lab, and we video recorded the interaction. They had one hour time so they could play and interact, and we told them, just imagine you just bought the system, get it, and you can interact with it. And based on these video recordings, three of the authors made a thematic analysis. And in combination with the prior experience that we had with the system, we tried to de derive certain guidelines. And I'm going to go now over some of them briefly. <coughs> so the first guideline, or the first thing that we found, is leverage symmetry. Do not try to, uh, to lift this non-HMD user to have exactly the same experience as the HMD user. This is not necessary. Um, he will himself use, uh, or have, um, use the advantages we have in the visualization, for instance, the orthographic map visualization that we had, which is better from the outside than um, as an HMD user. Another one, and it seems a little bit obvious initially, but it's something you constantly have to keep in mind. Design for the whole living room. Design in that way that everyone can participate and interact if you want to enjoy the session. Um, another one, physical engagement is fun, but in moderation. What we learned, it, it, it does increase. It does increase presence and enjoyment, but it must be transparent for the agent user what is going on, not that he only just get battered constantly and doesn't understand why. And the last part, design for mixed reality in chat spaces. Understand that your game when you walk is not only a software where you press a button, you're literally going to walk now. So if you design a ferry that is floating, but you hear footsteps, you're probably going to break the presence. So in conclusion, the contribution we had, we presented the concept and the implementation of Share VR, a system to combine HMD and non-HMD user. We showed its impact it has and the increase of um, presence and enjoyment for the HMD and for the non-HMD user. And we explored three application scenarios. So if there's going to be one thing you're going to take with this talk for you is uh, the message we, that we want to push that VR HMD should not only be designed focused not on the wearer on the HMD user, but should also be designed to include everyone in the environment. So in this sense, fight isolation and share VR. Thanks. talk. Thank you. Um, so I was curious, it seems like for um, a lot of these interactions, um, the, the display that you were looking at